Just to tie it back to the audience here, uh, when you went to school here, where, where did you live? Where, what dorm? Well, so I lived, on, I, lived in, uh, I lived in Cousins as a freshman, um, which is where I had this kind of meathead roommate that made fun of me for being a computer nerd. Um, and, you know, so my, my first thing was get out, of the, get out of that room as quick as I could. I found myself a single in South Quad with all of the other um, world famous uh, athletes like myself. So the Fab Five was, you know, <laughs> so it was basically the Fab Five, the national championship winning football team, and me. <laughs> yeah. Great, great. Hopefully that endears you to In somebody. Interesting times. Yeah, good, good. Um, and then uh, a couple of just quick backgrounds. Um, wh how'd you come up with the name Lab 49? That seems kind of curious. That's top, that's top secret. Um, no, so, um, you know, I, I like to, you know, make quick decisions and move on. My partners uh, uh, in Lab 49 are very thorough, let's say. And so one of the actually most enjoyable things and, and one of the things that people like love to do is come up with company names. Um, and there's endless ways to do that and we were banding these about for days and days and days. Um, and this is kind of like one of those how did they invent penicillin, it was a complete accident. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of said, you know, at one point, enough. This is, guys, we're wasting all this time, we should be doing real work. Let's just pick a name that doesn't mean anything, like Lab 49 or whatever, <laughs> right? <laughs> And then we can move on with it. And they were both like, yeah, that's the name. And I said, wait, what's, what, do you, what name? What are you talking about? And that was how we named the company. That's great. That's great. But, so. but I will say this. So I, at first, I was very against it. I thought it was a terrible name. But, um, but, but after some reflection, I, I really, what I liked about it was, um, well, the, the practical stuff, it's short. It's five letters. You, you can't misspell it, whatever. Um, but I thought Lab kind of you know, had an innovation sort of angle to it. And there's something about the number 49. Uh, how many like software or, you know, engineer type people are? So for software people, I think 49, I don't know, it's a square, like both of the digits are also square. I don't know, it's kind of an interesting number. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's great. That's great. And none, none of these are the prepared questions, actually, so I'm sorry I'm throwing you all these uh, You know, the it, it may not surprise you. It's not the first time anyone's asked that question. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt yeah. it. Great. And we'll let uh, the audience ask some questions in a, in a couple more minutes. Um, I just wanted to continue down this path a little bit. One of the things we'd like to know from uh, entrepreneurs that went to school here was what was something that, um, that they, they learned here at the University of Michigan that helped you uniquely prepare for your career as an entrepreneur? How long do we have? Um, well, so I mean, no. So I already told the one thing, which is obviously I, I became an engineer and really was 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 told that here, although that wasn't part of the university's program. Um, well, um, so one of the things that um, that I took with me when I started first trying to interview uh, developers, and you know, there's everyone in, in under the sun, you know, can call themselves a software developer, but there's a, a wide variety in terms of quality and background. And so I wanted a way to identify those that really had a proper background in computer science and software engineering. And so I actually went and opened up my undergrad curriculum, and this is now you know, seven, eight years out of school. Um, I went and opened up my undergrad curriculum. I went through the, I went through the, the subject uh, headings, basically, and I picked you know, one question from data structures and one from algorithms and one from database theory and design and one from software engineering, and I made up a question. And we had at my company, until just a couple of years ago, the Core 7 it was called. And every candidate that came into Lab 49 was always asked the Core 7, and it was one question from each of those subjects, and it was straight out of my undergrad um, engineering. So that's another topic, I, I would say. So, so, so building off that, though, when you're spent your time here, I mean, the, for the next few years, these students are going to be uh, living here. I mean, this is their life, um, standing in line for the bus, right. working late night in studies, right. uh, learning uh, obscure algorithms and, right. and coding. Right. You know, any of that jump out specifically as, as experiences, perhaps, or anything that led well to... to well, I mean, I was, always, you know, I was always, you know, doing it on my own, and there was no such program as this when I was here. Um, you know, I sound like an old man when I say that. Get off my lawn. No, but um, <laughs> like you know, there was you know, it was very like you, you you only had a few electives that you could take, and everything else was preordained, and that was how you did the engineering program. And so you know, I really had to do it on my own. And so you know, for us, actually, so I mentioned I started Business Velocity with my college roommate. Um, he and I discovered during college that we had both done very similar types of entrepreneurial activities before college. So I was always the kind of kid that was starting a lawn mowing business or a computer business or some other business growing up, and he had done a lot of the same stuff. And so we actually started a company here in Ann Arbor doing software consulting. Um, we called it Newman Chait Business Software Development. You can guess what uh, my partner's uh, last name was. Um, and our big challenges that we had to solve were how do you get a PO box and a, and a, and a 1-800 number and print stationery. 
Um, and we figured all that stuff out and we did it and then we got a couple clients and we spent our summers and to be fair, a few times when we maybe should have been in class, um, doing what we were obsessed about, which was you know, working, for, you know, working for ourselves and, and, and building uh, you know, projects for clients and doing sales and doing all that kind of stuff. So we had to do a lot of that on our own. I don't think there really was any place where one could you know, hear other, I mean, I didn't know what an entrepreneur was. It turned out, by the way, both my parents are entrepreneurs. <laughs> So I didn't, you know, but um, when I was, you know, graduating college, the biggest thing they wanted me to do was get a job at IBM. Um, and then it was only later that I realized that they had actually done, you know, what, what we think, what we call now entrepreneurship themselves. That's great. So you talk a little bit about um, when you, you and your co-founder started that company. I mean, you built a great team. You found somebody that it really clicked with. I mean, how many people here have been in teams that weren't so good? You, you guys gotten together just this week? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that's not just this week, right? That's a lot of hands went up, right? So we've all had this experience, right? So how, you know, how, how, what do you look for when you're trying to put a team together? How do you know when you find that right person that you're going to spend all these extra hours with? Well, there's, this, there's the famous saying, right? All, all happy families are alike and all unhappy families are, are different in their own way, right? There's, a, there's, there's infinite ways to get it wrong and there's really only one way that it, that it always works. Um, and I think partnerships, business partnerships are a lot like marriages in that, in that sense that, you know, you know, when, when you start out, um, you're spending you know, every night and every weekend with this person, and you know their finances, right? Because you had not having to make business decisions together, like should we plow the money back into the company or should we take it home? And you have to know if one person just had a kid or if someone you know, has a different you know, amount of rent or whatever, those decisions end up mattering. So you end up knowing all the very, very intimate details about yourself about each other and spending all your time together. So the first and foremost thing is you have to find someone that you can spend um, that much time with. But the other thing that I always looked for are um, uh, people that um, complement my skills so that are good at things that I'm bad at and bad at things I'm good at. And it's hard to think about, you know, you know being self-critical in that way is, is, is sometimes difficult, but it's important. Um, and then the second is find people that, um, you know, are, 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 are the best people you can find. Um, just, you know, I've, you know, I've never regretted, uh, you know, basically basing business decisions on those are amazing people. I want to be around them. We'll figure it out later. So um, you talked about in your slides um, uh, failure and learning from your mistakes. Yes. So, so we have to ask, can you share with us a failure of yours that you don't mind being recorded and shared on in Facebook and publicized everywhere that, uh, that people can hear about? Sure. I would that it were so interesting. Um, Okay, well, so, you know, probably um, one of the earlier ones that I can think of um, and more meaningful ones is, uh, you know, I talked earlier about learning sales. And unfortunately, I was in a position of having to do enterprise software sales before I had learned it. So um, we built this product and we did this amazing marketing campaign. So I'll start with the success, if you, if you don't mind. Um, it, was completely, it was a complete accident, so hopefully that's fine. But you know, we had this idea that you know, uh, you know, people were just, you know, email was, was too high volume. Nobody would ever uh, read an email that we sent out. But we knew who we wanted to reach. And we thought, you know what? People don't get that many faxes anymore. I bet if we send a fax, it'll somehow make its way to the right person's desk. So we sent out, we wrote a very short letter. It was like uh, you know, eight sentences. Dear so-and-so, we have this new product. Here's what it does. If you'd like to know more, uh, please let me know, sincerely. And we faxed it at the, end of the, at the end of the day to the top 25 heads of IT at these investment banks. And we went home. We came in in the morning, and we had six replies when we walked in. And ultimately, we had like an 80% response rate to this, this marketing program, I call it, whatever, this, this, this fax. Um, so we thought, great. You know, we got this thing nailed. Well, it turns out that the first meeting that we ended up getting was at Goldman Sachs, which is one of the most you know, famous and premier investment banks. And one of the things they're known for among many is um, they have a very high regard for themselves. Um, and you know, they are one of the most successful firms in, in the world. And so you know, they, they, that, that's the attitude that they take. And you know, at the time, I, I wasn't probably as sensitive to that dynamic as I could have been. And so we came in. Um, and. I had no idea how to sell something. So we started doing all the wrong things. We started talking about the features, and we didn't ask any questions, and we just blew through our slides with our face straight down. And you know, we ended the meeting, and it was a complete disaster. They were like, we could build this thing in a weekend. Why wouldn't you know? And so you, you know, you, it was like seriously one of the worst sales meetings I've ever attended, and I was the guy doing it. Um, so that was really what alerted me to the fact that, hey, there's probably something to learn here, and there's probably a way to do this better. And so. Um, 
Yeah, don't do that. So um, I'd like to let the students ask a question here, but maybe just one more. Uh, a lot of the students I talk to here are really interested in having a, a big impact on the world and creating a significant impact mm -hmm. and disrupted, changing the world. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, if you could think about, again, some of the things that you, you pulled from your slides, you know, the best advice, again, you would, uh, you would right. remind them for that. You know, I kind of think about that in, in, in a slightly different way. Um, so, you know, the, the thing that I always try to try to look for is, is kind of three factors in, you know, is what I'm doing going to be the, the right thing for me? Am I passionate about it? And to me, that's challenge, trajectory, and impact, right? So you mentioned impact, which is great. You want to have something that actually you know, changes the world or changes other, you know, changes, you know, some business or some industry. Um, but that's, that's the end, right? And I think what I've always tried to do is think, you know, what happens along the way? And so the first is, you know, you want challenge. If you're doing something that's too easy, to me, and I think to a lot of, you know, people that would, that would be in this type of class, you know, it's not enjoyable. It's not fulfilling. So you need to find something that's going to challenge you, that's not going to be, you know, so easy, you know, falling off a log. Um, and then when I say trajectory, I mean, you want to be going somewhere with it. You know, challenge is great, but if you're just coming in every day and banging your head on a wall and nothing's happening and nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, it's just frustrating. And so you do want to have something where incrementally throughout, you feel like you're getting better, you're developing skills, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're making progress. Um, and so I always try to think of, think of you know, what I'm doing in that framework. Um, and then obviously at the end, you know, did I have some impact? But you often don't know that until the end, and it can be a little bit, a little bit hazy.